to clarify, I am completely okay with making mistakes. I believe that mistakes are what make you grow. The only problem here is that the girl who is in charge of the company's moving process was a really, really nice girl. And I felt like what I did was putting extra work on her already messed up to-do list. That's why I felt really bad. I need to get over that goat because sometimes you just do things that you didn't mean to so you need to forgive yourself and understand that it is not such a big deal i hate in chinese <laughs> troubling others what's done is done there's nothing that i can do to fix it don't know if you can hear me but i'm going to leave just taking everything home yeah bye i'll see you tomorrow I just got to the office and today is the official moving day. Uh, I really like the view here. So it's such a pity that we're moving, but I'm very looking forward to the new working space. I know that you can see the Orient Tower on this. Oh no, sorry, nope. <laughs> okay, you can see the Oriental Tower from here. Last day. Bye-bye! Bye! Most of the people on my team were on business trips on the scheduled moving day, which was on November 12th, a day after W11. Since no one was at the office, I was designated to help coordinate the moving and clean the drawers and desktops. So, um, I just got home. I'll probably spend the rest of today working from home. It's kind of weird to move. Especially because we were only in that office for two months. <laughs> we're only two months in and we're already experiencing such a big transition. It's really good for me, at least. I am a Gemini. The stereotype for a Gemini is that we really love changes, which I guess is kind of true. In general, I am kind of enjoying this whole moving thing i hate to be in the same space doing the same thing every single day i love experiencing new things i love to see changes sometimes i would just move furniture in my room to just feel a little bit different yeah so i love the thrill of moving into a completely new space i am really looking forward to having this new experience so yeah i guess that is it for this simple moving vlog and i'll see you in the next one hello people welcome back to my channel today is june 11th which means it is my birthday like last year i have booked myself a hotel room so that i can get a break from all of the family stuff taking care of the baby <laughs> i woke up really early this morning because I was so excited about the things that I have planned for today. So first of all, originally, I wanted to try to recreate some of the old family photos that we had because the other day I found this old camera that we had still works. I remember most of the pictures that we had when I was a kid was taken by this camera. I want to use the same camera to try to recreate those moments, but it was a complete mess. <laughs> Yeah. I'm gonna try to wait for my friend to get off her shift and then we can go back to the old neighborhood that I used to live in and then try to take pictures there and then I also wanted to go to the hair salon to get my hair cut and then after that I am going to go to the hotel so that I can film the Q&A if you have subscribed to my channel for longer than a year then you would remember 
that last year I have filmed this Q and A where I asked a bunch of my best friends to ask me questions, and I promised myself that I would do this every single year on my birthday. You get to see how much last year has impacted on you. After th that, I'm actually going to go watch the sunset with my friend. After the sunset, we're gonna go have dinner. I'll just end my day with a nice chill. Hotel stay. I'm really excited. It is three o'clock in the afternoon. I am finally free to go. I don't know why, but I just love the idea of being able to be by myself. Just me, myself, and I. Especially on my birthday. I just want to be forgotten by the whole world, but at the same time remembered. That sounds so weird, but yeah. Let's go! Huh? Okay, I just almost forgot how to drive. We're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Hi! This is my new haircut. Huh? It is already 4.30. I don't think I have a lot of time. We might have to skip the sunset, which is totally fine because today is my birthday. I don't want to overstress myself, you know, keeping up with the schedule. No, 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 no. We're just gonna chill. And if we're gonna miss the sunset, it's fine because it's always gonna be another sunset. I'm gonna use the next hour to try to finish filming the Q&A. Let's just get down to business. Welcome to my birth party. Before we get into the Q&A, I just want to say that 26 feels damn good. I remember last year, this time, I felt really anxious about turning 25. I was like, oh my God, I'm so old. I don't have much time left. I don't have a job. I don't have a family. What am I doing with my life? I'm such a loser. But this year, I feel fucking awesome right now. I feel completely different from how I felt a year ago and I can't wait to answer all these questions. I just finished filming the Q&A. I was in a rush because my friend has already got off work and the sun is setting right in front of me. Hopefully we can see the sunset because I know a really good spot for sunset. Let's go. This place. This used to be my old neighborhood. I grew up here. We're gonna try to find this tree. This is what we're dealing with. Definitely this tree. How do we recreate this? She took a picture from here. This is the same This is the same <laughs> we just finished all the pictures. The sky is still bright, so that means that we still have time to look at the sunset. Apparently, the sun sets in different spots in summer and in winter. back in the hotel my friends have all gone home i was talking to my friend over dinner that i feel so completely different from last year the dinner last year i remember all i was thinking about was that i wanted to be alone it was really difficult for me especially when i came back to china after covid i was completely lost i was overwhelmed i was depressed I didn't know what to do with my life. I felt like a loser. I felt so empty inside. I am that type of person who needs to keep going. The life that I have wanted was just taken away from me and there is nothing that I can do about it. 
I just drove into our own door. Like I broke our door because I wasn't paying attention. Because I was just thinking about how pathetic my life is and how narcissistic I am, thinking that I would be able to achieve great things. Like look at me right now. I don't have a job. I don't have any income. I spend the whole afternoon looking at websites trying to find a job. Everyone thinks that I know what I want, but I don't even know what the fuck I want myself. But this year, I am feeling so much better and I, I think there are a couple of reasons that I really want to just show my gratitude towards because I'm really grateful for several things that have happened to me in the past year. First of all, I am so happy that I am back at home with my family best friends who have become my source of energy and happiness. It's almost like I didn't know how unhappy I was until I was with them. My family and my friends have been feeding me the energy and the happiness that I didn't know that I had, but thankfully I have them. Second of all, I am really grateful that I have a channel right now. I have so many subscribers. It's crazy because it's always been my dream to have a platform where I can express my feelings and my opinions and my thoughts. Looking back, I'm really grateful that because I felt like that I wasn't doing enough, because I felt like, you know, I was wasting my life, my time, I wanted to do something meaningful. And that was when I started to pick up my camera and started filming. In the last year, so many great things have happened to me on this platform. I have seen so many kind comments from you guys. I have just been really proud of myself to be able to help you. I am also very happy that some of you have made friends with each other. You guys are supporting each other, which is awesome and amazing. And that is something that I've always wanted to do. I had a whole speech about this, but like I said, my video isn't going to be perfect. I guess the message that I want to send out to you is that if you're feeling really down, if you're feeling really depressed, things will get better because I literally felt like last year was hell. <laughs> But I pushed through it and I am feeling all freshed up. I'm feeling reborn. As long as you are trying your best, as long as you're positive, you're being kind, nice things will come to you. Yeah, I guess that's my overall message from this video. With that, that's it for today's birthday vlog. And I'll see you in my next one. People, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'll be recommending five of my favorite English podcasts. If you haven't heard of podcasts before, it is a monologue or dialect recorded usually in a studio. So the sound quality is much better and the pronunciation is much clearer in comparison with TV shows and YouTube videos, which is perfect for intensive listening to help you improve your overall English skills. And at the same time, podcast is usually centered around a specific subject, which makes the discussion more in details and more in depth. This is perfect for extensive listening because it helps with our English learning, knowledge building, and self-improvement. For me personally, I would listen to podcasts whenever I feel overwhelmed and jumpy. I would put down my cell phone, stay away from social media, put on my headphones, and just indulge myself in a good English podcast. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the video. 第一个推荐潘基杰尼告诉你是由中国的小姐姐杰尼和一位北美的轮班小哥哥一起主持每集十分钟左右以双语交杂的形式谈论一些比较轻松有趣的话题很像是被邀请到杰尼家做客然后在
goblin mode. Uh, goblin mode. Okay, so 就是你很 give up， 放弃人生，有点像躺平是吧？ Ah,、uh, in a sense, but don't forget that this is a mode. 第二个推荐 All Ears English 每集呢也是十几分钟，它的更新频率相当的高，会围绕某一主题进行干货的分享，在某一语境下常用的单词呀、表达、俗语等等，非常非常地道。像我最近就学到了一个俗语叫 Neck of the Woods， 某一区域的附近，我们就可以把它理解成某个人的地盘。那你跟朋友说，哎，你来我的地盘的时候，不要忘记来我家吃饭哦。你就可以说 ，If you're ever in my neck of the woods, please. Please make sure to come for dinner. 这种表达就是很难在别的地方学习的。除了分享这些比较地道的俗语之外呢，他们也会定期分享一些商务英语相关或者是雅思托福考试相关的特辑，超级有用。那相比潘吉杰尼告诉你呢 ，All Ears English 难度会更高，因为两位主播呢都是外国人，语速较高，用词也比较地道，很有可能就会出现听不懂的情况。我在这里呢就给大家推荐一款辅助英语学习的开挂神。器，让你们可以秒懂全英文的播客。讯飞办公耳机 i f l y b u t Air， 它是一款开放式的办公耳机，可以在我们播放音频、视频的同时进行实时的字幕转写以及翻译，特别特别适合用来学习英语。What would you do if you heard someone say, "We might can do that"? When native English speakers make grammar mistakes, it can be difficult to know how to react. Today we share three common grammar mistakes made by native speakers and what you should do when you hear them. 转换好的字幕，大家也可以复制粘贴到文档当中进行进一步的编辑和学习。它可以识别包括英语在内的九国语言、十二种方言以及十种专业术语。哪怕是像潘吉杰尼告诉你这样子的中英文混杂的音频，它也可以做到实时的字幕转写，特别特别有用。除了可以学习英语之外，这个功能也适用在网络工作会议上。搭配使用会议狗，就可以在 PC 端实现实时的转写，不会错过任何。会议当中的重要信息，它不是那种传统的入耳式耳机，所以可以在保护耳道的同时呢，通过空气定向传导技术，保证音频的质量，防止漏音。我就很喜欢它的这个颜色，就这种奶白奶白的，特别高级的砂岩白，而且它有两种佩戴模式，可以在办公和运动之间自由切换。第三个要推荐的呢是 Modern Love， 它是《纽约时代周刊》最受欢迎的专栏之一，分享普通人的爱情。故事，但这个爱情故事呢，并不是狭义的伴侣之间的爱情，而是更加广义的朋友、家人，甚至是自爱。这个专栏故事呢，其实已经被改编成了电视剧，我自己也是一直在追的。播客版本呢，也超级超级棒。除了会有专业的播音员之外，也会定期邀请一些演员去配音这些故事，就戴上耳机，慢慢的听。他们把普通人的爱情故事娓娓道来，搭配着背景音乐，特别特别有画面感、故事感、电影感。For example, one morning I met a man in the supermarket produce aisle. I hadn't slept for three days, but you wouldn't have known it to look at me. My eyes glowed green, my strawberry blonde hair put the strawberries to shame, and I literally sparkled. I'd worn a gold sequined shirt to the supermarket. Manic taste is always bad. 第四个推荐呢叫 On Purpose， 它是一个心理健康相关的博客分享，是由英国的一位作家兼 Vlogger J Shady 来主持。他的声音很温柔浑厚，就非常非常的治愈。然后他的分享也很鸡汤，很有用。这个博客在 App Store 的评分高达 4.8 分，能获得这个分数真的非常非常不容易。我觉得从他的博客当中可以让我更加清晰的了解、认识并且分析自己的一些情绪。在最新的一期当中呢 ，J 就用七个问题来带领大家去分析、回顾自己过去的一年，从而能够让我们更好的展望第二年。I realize for every month or every day or every week that you're apart, it takes that same amount of time to recreate that intimacy. Imagine if you did not tend to a garden for six months; it would be messy, it would be wild, and then you'd have to reinvest. 五个推荐叫 After Hours， 三位哈佛商业学院的教授。
在下班之后，在办公室里的闲聊，每个人呢都会带着自己感兴趣的话题来进行讨论，这其中就会包括政治、社会、国际关系等等。他们是那种非常健康的，然后轻松、诙谐、幽默的去分享观点，而不是那种非黑即白的辩论。他们对一些问题的思考呢，也非常非常的有启发性，听到就是学到。All right, Young Me, 2022. What'd you like? The fall of FTX. <laughs> so now, to be clear, I don't mean in a Schadenfreude kind of way, and it's definitely not for lack of empathy for the people who lost money. But I do think, in many ways, this is the best thing that could happen for the future of digital currencies. And the reason I say that is for a couple of reasons. First, so that's it for today's sharing. I hope it's helpful. And with that, that's it for today's video. And I'll see you in my next one. Hello, people. Welcome to my Double Eleven unboxing. As you can tell, I might have gone a little bit overboard. I have about twenty packages right now, and more are on their way because this year is technically my first Double Eleven because I am finally financially. Independent. I make my own money, and they are at my disposal. So I decided to pamper myself. We have a wide variety of goodies, ranging from skincare products to makeup to toiletries to stationery. I am so excited to unbox this. So definitely give me some likes, leave a comment down below, because that will make my heart really happy. And without further ado, let's just get started. First up, we will start with skincare products and makeup. I have an idea of where everything is, so let's do them one by one. Okay. First up, I got a mascara from Perfect Diary. So the old mascara that I have been using was bought ages ago. So I've been searching for a good mascara, and my friend was actually using this. So I tried hers. I really liked it. So I got it. And as a matter of fact, I did not put on mascara today because I wanted to use this right now. Whoa. This is why I decided to get it because it is just so damn skinny. We will get really intimate. Okay, so you have to be really gentle, or else your lashes will just get stuck together. Okay, so that is one. Next up, I'm seriously sweating so hard. Oh my god. Okay, so this one. Literally has been my holy grail. When I first started doing makeup, my eyebrow will just come off. But after I discovered this, my life has been made so much better. And this is an eyebrow coat. So after you've done your eyebrow, just put it on, and your eyebrow stays the whole day. I love this so much that I actually have them in stock. Next up. Oh, we're getting faster. Great. So this next thing is from Estee Lauder. I actually don't know why I have such a big box, considering what I got is pretty small. Wow! So I got something from Estee Lauder, and it is oh my god, fancy box! Literally, <laughs> like you don't need such a big box. Oh my god! Okay. <laughs> I think I understand why people like to spend money on like big brands because the the packaging just makes you feel really nice, like you are being valued. <laughs> This is what I got, but the rest of these are just gifted. Anyways, I got their eye cream. So one fifteen millimeter plus. Whoa, okay, plus three of these small ones. So in total, they are also 15 millimeters. So you get two of these for 530 RMB, which I think is a good steal since I got a lot of extra stuff sent to me. So let's take a look at what the extra stuff is. A small makeup bag, double wear sample. This is actually what I use for foundation. So quite nice. Next up is also a skincare product. So I got something from Origins, Carco mask. Main reason that I wanted to get this is because I really like Origins facial wash. 
but they don't have the big 100 milliliter one on sale so i had to get this one in order to get free samples of the face wash and they sent me three of these so that is it in terms of skincare and makeup products but i do have an eyebrow pencil on its way is from this not so famous brand it's called pbx i don't have eyebrows so i definitely need to do my eyebrow every single day so this is a necessity for me <laughs> the eyebrow pencil is like just teeny tiny which is amazing look at how small it is let's move on to toiletries so i got this body wash from a brand that I actually don't know. The only reason that I decided to get it is because I was trying to get to 300 in order to have the discount. I decided to give this a try and it's from a brand called Chill More. When it comes to picking body wash, my priority is for it to smell really really nice because I don't really like wearing perfume so I want my body wash to give me that natural pleasant smell and I really like how simple and minimal the bottle is okay it's hard to tell I will definitely use it and let you know how I feel about this I got two lotion samples but I actually got lotion myself the body lotion is from a brand that i actually know when i was in the us i lived in boston so the weather was really really cold so my skin tends to get really really dry so i'm constantly buying lotion this brand was like everywhere when i was in the states and everyone around me was using this and you see it in supermarket next up oh i'm so excited about this one like i said i stayed in the us for like less than a year and i honestly don't really enjoy living there because life is just so inconvenient the only thing that i love about living in america is the smell of detergent <laughs> the smell of laundry is so strong and i love it because it just smells so clean when i get back to china i couldn't find a detergent that has that strong scent like a strong pleasant Scent. So I decided to get one from the US. <gasps> okay. Smelling it. Wei <laughs> Lu You can also see it in China, but this one is actually shipped from US. Hoping that it will give me that smell. It's sealed. Because I will be really disappointed if it doesn't have that smell. This one, like this is so tiny. It's like a hundred RMB. So it's in capsules. It's not the stereotypical detergent that you use, which is in liquid. Really easy to use. I can't wait to try it. For those of you who don't know, I think you might know. I'm like very skinny, so I don't have any boobs. There's actually a word in English to describe people like me with really small boobs and it's called itty bitty community. Yeah, I am a part of that community and I hate wearing bras especially when I was younger I didn't know what bras to pick for myself so I usually end up with really uncomfortable bras and I'm so grateful a lot of brands here in China are being really really open to people with different bodies it's really surprising because these brands i actually have heard about them on youtube before i get on with packing i wanted to share with you guys my nay bras and loungewears that i'm so obsessed with love what this brand stands for they believe that your size is a size and that their barely zero bras can adapt to you i feel really happy that chinese brands are going overseas seen and heard and used by the international community so go Nay It's called their Barely Zero. Barely Zero just screams comfortable to me. So it's like you're not wearing anything. Oh my God. They're very stretchy as well. They're saying no matter what size you are, it will fit you. I feel like this is too big, so I don't know. Will this fit me? I might have to try. Oh, they fit! Hallelujah! It's so comfy! Oh my god! I'm in love. Hallelujah. 
they fit really well. It feels just like the name entails, barely zero, like you're barely wearing a bra. So next up, we're actually gonna do stationery. So first up, I think it's a bag. Oh, oh my God, they're so cute. This is my to-go makeup bag, my lipstick, my mirror when I go out. It is like 100% love at first sight when i saw this because i really love peach it is my favorite fruit and when i saw this i was like oh my god i'm gonna get this perfect size and it's so cute oh my god you can you can even just go out like this seriously look at it it's so cute so they sent me another one in pair oh my god it matches my outfit actually it's in pink wow i love this Ah, this. Okay, this thing is probably my favorite item in this entire haul. Let's open this. <laughs> it's a notebook and it says 人间值得. Wait till you see the inside. I can't stop smiling. Oh my god. So it's technically a journal. So you write something down every single day. I love journaling. Each day, you have space to put a picture and you have space to write something down. So it's not like tons of work. It has 365 pages, a year worth of good memories. So I have been taking pictures every single day so that I can put it here. It says 人间值得 and it's translated into life is worth living. <gasps> I can't wait to put my pictures up. So this next thing, and actually from one of my previous student, she reached out to me, said that she was really grateful, that I helped her to learn English. She said that she wanted to give me something and I'm like crying. I don't know what she got from me. Ah, oh my God. <laughs> what is this though? It has a little cat in there. From Google. Ah, it's a cell phone holder. Where do you hold the phone though? Ah, here, okay, it's so cute. A little cat. You're gonna be my designated cell phone holder from now on. No mokiyowa! Thank you so much. I'll definitely use this. Okay, what do we have left? I bought a pair of jeans. It is really difficult for me to find a pair of jeans that actually fit me. Buying jeans is always like a gamble for me, especially online because you never know if it's gonna fit. I have returned so many jeans. I bet like 60% of the chance this one is going to have to be returned because they won't fit me, but I'm very hopeful. Okay, I'm gonna try this. Ooh. Oh! They actually fit me like really well. I love this. It's like hugging me. Wow, it feels like Christmas for me. I'm gonna wear this for the rest of the video. Okay, next up, we have snacks. So happy that we only have three boxes left. So when it comes to snacks, I tend to just eat childhood flavors. I only eat snacks that I have been eating ever since childhood. My favorite snack is this. I bought like 20 of them. Another one of my favorites. I love this. Lang Wei Xian YYDS. Speaking of childhood flavor, I have been eating this for like the past 20 years. So I really like this one. I've got a lot of them. Last, this is something that I would recommend to those who always have problem getting up in the morning. Cereal. And I love this one because it's not that sweet. This is really good if you're running late in the morning. You can just pour a little bit of this and pour a little bit of milk and you have a perfect breakfast. So this is my favorite flavor. I've never tried this. Would love to try. So that is it for today's video. Give me some likes, leave a comment down below if you saw anything that you would like to purchase as well. That is it for today's video and I will see you in the next one. Hello people, 
Welcome back to my channel. 今天的视频要给大家推荐六位来自世界各地的英语油管博主。因为疫情，我已经很久没有出过国了，所以就可以通过这六位油管博主的视角去看看这个世界。他们六位的风格吧，都属于话比较多且闲不下来的旅游爱好者，所以特别适合我平时去练听力、磨耳朵。因为上班之后，其实没有什么时间可以特别系统的去学习。英语磨耳朵这个习惯呢，就可以帮我去练听力，而且还可以锻炼我的语感，积累一些词汇表达。像我平时经常会蹦出一些连我自己都感觉到惊讶的表达，其实都是因为我利用碎片时间去磨耳朵，慢慢积累下来的。磨耳朵的话，我推荐大家最好是使用耳机。或者是还原度、清晰度都比较高的音响，因为你听的越准确，那么你发音的也会越标准。我现在在用的呢是这一款专门为学习打造的取悦人声音响，开机自动默认为音乐娱乐模式，按一下这个小人头就会切换为直播课模式。这个时候人声就会变得非常非常清晰，特别适合用来磨耳朵。等会也给大家试一下这个声音。Without further ado, let's just jump right to the video. 第一位博主。Ava Jules， 她的 bass 呢在夏威夷，就说出这三个字，我觉得就够吸引人了吧？夏威夷耶，而且是在夏威夷的独居日常。她平时的话就会分享自己的日常 vlog， 也会分享自己的穿搭，是一个非常开朗、外向、爱笑的女孩子。她开车出门就是夏威夷的碧海蓝天、嗯，有时候心情不好，她就开着车出门，到沙滩上面晒着日光浴，然后看书听歌。真的就是羡慕极了。第二位博主 Emma Chamberlain， 她在油管上面拥有大概有一千一百多万的粉丝，她是一个。嘴巴特别特别碎，很喜欢去从一些特别奇怪的角度去吐槽生活，吐槽自己的一个零一年的小妹妹。她之前的 base 呢是在洛杉矶，她的视频的特点，第一就是非常真实的去向你毫无修饰的展示自己的内心世界；第二就是在极度治愈和极度搞笑之间来回穿梭。有的时候看视频就会觉得哇，好治愈，好美，好有电影感呢、哦。然后下一秒她就开一个。玩笑就把你一下子拉回到现实的世界，充满了他自己那些美式幽默的吐槽。大概在两个月之前，我发现他所有的视频的坐标都变到了欧洲，然后他录了一系列的视频，叫 Twenty Four Hours in the City。然后这些城市呢，全部都是欧洲的城市。这些视频呢，延续了他原本视频的风格，就很美，很治愈。但是有的时候呢，又来一点对于这个城市的吐槽，非常非常像你和你爱吐槽的闺蜜一起去欧洲旅行，真的特别特别推荐。This morning, I call the front desk and say, "Hey, do you guys have a tampon by chance?" This morning, I call the front desk and say, "Hey, do you guys have a tampon by chance?" They send up this. I don't know how to use this. 第三位博主 Elena Tabor， 这位真的是宝藏博主。我觉得她身上有很多的不同角色。首先，她是一个油管博主，她的视频就是分享自己在纽约独居的日常。因为她很喜欢装修，所以也会有一系列的视频是带着我们去她的朋友家里参观纽约的一些公寓。其次，她也是一个超模。因为工作的原因，会去到世界的各个角落，从这个角度向我们展示世界各国的风光。但最吸引我的就是他作为一个学霸型的旅游达人。虽然 base 在纽约，但他视频十个里面大概有五个、六个都是在世界的各个角落里面旅游的。你可以在他的这些视频里看到他登山、攀岩、公路旅行、潜水，超有冒险精神，超让人羡慕。也是从两个月前，他开始了在。欧洲地中海一块的旅行，除了会去展示当地的风景之外，他还会从历史、人文各个角度去分析这个城市，超级无敌
宝藏。第四位博主摩呀 m e l 我觉得我可能念错他的名字。在我之前推荐亚裔油管博主的时候，已经介绍过他了。那个时候呢，他还在英国 Dublin 念艺术专业的本科。他在毕业之后。我就发现他的坐标就从伦敦到 Venice 到 Paris 到 Florence 到 Barcelona， 我就很羡慕。他的生活是比较慢节奏的，然后因为他是读艺术出身的嘛，去到这些艺术殿堂级的城市之后，他也会去当地去参加一些艺术的课堂。第五位博主是来自澳大利亚悉尼的 Dear Nessie， 我是最近才发现这位博主的。据我的观察。来看，他应该是一个华裔，应该蛮小就在澳洲生活，所以他的澳式口音真的超可爱。Julie only took like two or three days to arrive. Winter is coming, and I want my apartment to give off like nice, warm, cozy vibe. 平时的视频的话，就是分享丁宁的独居日常。然后他也很喜欢 K-pop， 所以会和朋友一起去看韩流明星的演唱会。他最新一期的视频就是他正在打包行李要飞到韩国去，所以我还蛮期待他在。韩国的旅行的，既然提到了韩国，那我们今天最后一位博主呢，就是来自于韩国的 Dobi d u b a 虽然他是在韩国的韩国人，但他从小就在国外读书，所以他的英文是非常流利标准的。我觉得他是一个非常真实，偶尔也会在自己的视频里透露出自己成长迷茫的一位博主。他所有的视频都是围绕美食展开的。其实对于韩国，从旅游的角度来说，我并没有那么的丰。疯狂，但是从美食的角度来说，我真的就是一个韩餐狂人。我真的很喜欢吃韩国的料理，不管是他在家里面自制的，还是去韩国餐厅里面看他吃，我就觉得很治愈，很幸福。I hope you guys liked all the vloggers that I recommended, and hopefully COVID will end soon so that we can actually go to these places and see for ourselves. But for now, that's it for today's video, and I'll see you in my next one. Hello, people! Welcome back to my channel. 一个人在家学习有多难？我能体会，网课学习的这一年多期间，我们家里就充满了各种各样的诱惑。我的手机，我的床，我的小侄女，就特别特别想刷、想躺、想盘。除此之外呢，还有其他各种各样的干扰。因为我的书桌旁边就是一面大通窗，所以我转头就能看见外面。遇到什么邻居吵架啊，就能瞬间吸引我的注意力，因为毕竟吃瓜比我学习有意思多了。但就是在这样的情况下面，我也提前上交了毕业论文，完成了近千页的英文学术论文的阅读，给大家展示一下我做的笔记。除此之外呢，我还剪辑了近五十个视频，那靠的就是我接下来要分享的这些让我的注意力超级集中的小技巧，帮你克服学习障碍，养成自律的好习惯。At least when it's needed. Without further ado, let's just jump right into it. 第一，召唤自控力，保持学习动力。对我来说，学习的动力就是时有时无。有的时候我动力满满，感觉自己要改变世界了；但有的时候呢，又浑浑噩噩，只想躺在床上刷韩剧。我要和我想这个决定，其实是由我们大脑的前额皮质来控制的。Professor Robert Sapolsky from Stanford University found that the main function of the prefrontal cortex in our brain is pushing us to make the harder choice, choosing what's needed, not what we wanted. 这个前额皮质其实是需要我们有意识的唤醒的，所以我特别建议大家在每天起床之后花一到两分钟的时间做一个简单的冥想，让自己在我要努力学习、完成任务和我想刷手机打发时间之间去做出一个决定。这个过程呢，其实就是在唤醒我们的前额皮质，让它充分发挥自己的功能，帮助我们做出更难的那个决定 ，which is 努力学习，完成任务。或者你可以直接在起床之后听一个 motivation 的 video， 潜意识里面去告诉自己，我们无路可退。你怎么睡得着的？你这个阶段，你睡得着觉。第二，你需要了解，学习是需要进入状态的。在英文里面有一个专业的术语去描述高效学习的状态，叫 the flow state， 
一旦进入的 flow state， 你可以发现自己能够全身心的投入到学习里面，而且效率极其高，时间也过得特别的快。不管外界的环境有多么的吵，你都能够不受到任何的干扰。进入到这个学习的 flow state 呢，是需要时间的，一般来说至少需要半个小时。所以，如果你在这半个小时里面不停的起身去干别的事情，那你就会一直都进入不了这个的 flow state， 不仅浪费时间、浪费精力，而且还会觉得自己什么都没学到。所以，学习之前尽量把所有要做的事情都做好，准备好水。把文具放在自己能够拿到的地方，打印好所有需要的文件资料，尽量不要因为其他的事情暂停学习，起身离开书桌，因为一旦你离开，那么你本可以进入的这个的 flow state 又要重新开始。第三，我们需要打造学习的空间，营造学习的氛围。首先。我们需要在自己的房间里面划分学习和休息的区域，在学习的区域尽量不要去做休闲的事情。除此之外，我们要尽量保持自己学习区域的干净整洁，因为学习这个事情本来就会很让人心烦，所以你要保证自己眼前看见的这些东西不是来给你增压的，而是来给你减压，让你可以放松心情，更加投入学习。比如说，我们可以在桌子上放置一些小的绿植，把一些小件的杂乱的物品收拾到盒子里面去，尽量保持整张桌子的这种整洁和高颜值，让自己愿意在这里学习下去。其次，就算是有了一个学习的空间，一个人还是很难有学习的氛围。所以我会播放一些 Study with Me， 就是一些沉浸式的学习视频。而且我通常都会选择有图书馆白噪音的 Study with Me， 因为我要用电脑去阅读文献，所以我都会有两台显示器。关注我视频的同学就知道，我之前用的那台显示器呢，其实年代非常久远，所以最近呢就换了一台明基的超 Q 屏。不得不说，二十。十七寸的这个大屏用起来真香，而且它还有护眼的功能。像我阅读文献，一般一读就是几个小时，所以就会导致眼睛特别酸胀，很累。但是呢，这台明基的超 Q 屏是自带护眼低蓝光模式的，所以看起来就不会那么的累。而且它内置带有双音响，可以瞬间把你拉进那个 Study with me 里的图书馆。沉浸感很强，让你这个学习的效率蹭蹭蹭蹭的往上涨。第四个小技巧是针对我们这个学习路上最大的一块绊脚石，那就是我们的手机，对抗手机成瘾的这个习惯。我之前就发现自己刷手机能一天刷十个小时，但是在这一年下来呢，我其实发现了几个特别有用的对抗手机成瘾的小方法。第一个就是现在的智能手机呢，大多都是带有查看屏幕使用时间这么一个功能的，所以你先去看一下自己一天之内。在刷手机上花了多少时间？然后第二就是你要找出来哪些软件是你刷的时间最久的。找出来之后呢，你要跟自己签一个协定，就是一天只能打开三到四次这几个软件，而且每一次规定自己只能刷二十分钟。像我之前刷的最多的就是微博，所以我跟自己签订的协约就是，我每天只能早上九点、中午十二点、下午三点。和晚上九点这四个时间段去刷微博，而且每次只能刷二十分钟。如果你刷的最多的不是微博，而是微信的朋友圈的话，其实微信的朋友圈也是可以被关闭的。你只需要打开微信，我设置通用，发现页管理，在这里关掉朋友圈的入口，这样再回到微信主页的时候，发现栏里就没有朋友圈可以刷。这个方法就特别推荐在，比如说你有一个特别大的 paper 要交。或者是在期中、期末考试之前，强制性的把自己的这个成瘾的源头给它关掉。如果以上这些方法还不能切断手机对你的吸引力的话，那么我就建议你干脆就把这个手机藏起来，放在自己拿不到的地方。比如说厨房呀、卫生间呀，或者放在另一个房间里面。当然，你也可以选择直接把自己的手机交给室友或者是其他人。我之前在读书的时候，就经常会把手机给我妈，我妈就会经常拿着我的手机跑来敲我的门，问说：“哎，你手机干嘛给我？”我心里就在想，我也不想啊，但是我没那点自控力呀、啊。
第五个学习的小技巧就是，我特别推荐大家去买一个这样的计时器，其实特别便宜，就十几块钱。因为我们学习的时候，其实是有自己比较喜欢、比较偏袒的部分的。就比如说，我就特别喜欢英语，然后特别喜欢做 PPT， 所以我在做 PPT 和阅读上面就会花特别特别多的时间，但就导致其他那些需要花费时间和精力的任务就一直完成不了，所以。我就会用这样的一个小的计时器去提醒自己，在每一个任务上面到底花了多少时间。我之前一般都会给自己设一个二十五分钟的闹钟，就是每隔二十五分钟它都会响一次，这样就可以提醒到自己，哎 ，Circle， 你已经在这件事情上花了二十五分钟了。如果觉得自己的效率不高，那么你就可以适当的调整自己的学习的方式和速度，从而让自己更加高效的可以去完成更多的任务。那。最后一个小的技巧或者说贴士就是 ，you need to learn to reward yourself， 要学会奖励自己。如果我一整天都有特别努力的学习的话，那么那天晚上我就可以去刷一集电视剧，或者是可以出去吃一次夜宵。如果我整一个礼拜工作日内都有好好学习，那么我就可以在周六或者周日选一天。做自己喜欢做的事情，和闺蜜一起出去吃饭呀、逛街呀、看电影啊，等等都可以。适当的休息之后，我们才能够更加有动力的去面对之后的挑战。Little treats along the way so that you can walk further. So with that, those are my tips for you to study more efficiently alone at home. Like I said, I did struggle a lot in the last year trying to stay focused. But with those tips, I was able to finish my academic work, doing my part-time job, along with a lot of other travel family stuff. And I do hope that these tips can help you as well to achieve whatever goal you have set for yourself. So that is it for today's video, and I'll see you in my next one. Your objective when you're interviewing for any position is to be an interesting candidate, not perfect, just interesting. Number two, what kind of a candidate? The one they need. I am a great match for whatever you need. So you need to know what the company needs so you can be the best match. Hello, people. Welcome back to my channel. I am currently an international management trainee at a Fortune 500 company. To get this job offer, I went through six stages of English job interview. So in today's video, I am collaborating with Cambly tutors with professional backgrounds to give you guys the ultimate guide to English job interviews, which includes. Best and worst practices, ways to practice, online resources, and so much more. So, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Every point that you're mentioning should be relating to something that they're looking for. So, exactly, it has to be relevant to the position you're applying for. If you're applying for a job in a risk department, you better be great at conflict resolution, at risk mitigation. You have to know what they need, what they're looking for. It has to also be relevant to the company goal. The yeah. only way you know company goals, company values, and company mission is、mm -hmm. if you do your homework and you read up on the company before you ever interview. Today, we can find anything you ever want on the. Internet. There's another thing you have to learn about the company. English is called the pain point. So if their pain point is that they have a very high turnover rate, when you introduce yourself, you say something on the lines of, "I am looking for an innovative company corporation where I can establish myself as、mm -hmm. a professional and where I can build a career and grow." With the company, okay.、Mm -hmm. And the first thing I would say is, do not apologize for your poor English. You never admit it in an interview that you don't know something.、Yeah. So、you say something like. I'm not very familiar with that application,、mm. or one of my strengths is that I'm a very fast learner.、So、you're going to communicate your strengths, not your weaknesses. The best way really is with another human. Interview with the opposite gender. I also practiced with Cambly tutors last year before my interview, and thanks to their constructive feedback, I was able to secure my job offer. So I would highly recommend practicing with Cambly tutors before your English interview. Just type in business or interview to get a list of experienced Cambly tutors to practice your English interview with. Cambly is now celebrating its 10 year anniversary, so use my code Tensorco to get a 15 minute session for free and a 20% off on a monthly plan. Best advice I would give them is to try to be the Themselves and not to memorize their answers. When you repeat a word for long enough, suddenly what it means dissolves, and it's just a sound. You actually lose your freshness, your motivation. You get stale. You get bored. Depending on the level of the student, if it's a high enough level to make that expression fine, don't do it to impress. Do it because you really naturally use、mm. that vocabulary. If you don't. 
leave it alone. Have you ever played this game? Tell me lies. This really helps warm up the student. It helps the student become creative, not worry about trying to remember something that's true. Try to stay on the question. Also appreciate that the interviewer is probably tired and bored and doing a job. Make it easy for him or her to understand what you're saying. Short, sharp, concise answers. Don't waffle on. The other thing is slow down. Take your time. It's very important when you're speaking to make a little break. Mm -hmm. Before you say something else, it gives the person a chance to absorb what you said, and then they're also, oh, what is he going to say next? Always use a phrase like, I believe that my company is uh, not allowing me to, or your company will allow me to realize my full potential and develop my skills and advance my career. For more ideas on how to answer frequently asked interview questions like self-introduction, biggest weakness and strengths, another Cambly tutor introduced me to this website that has structures, frameworks, and examples for you to get inspired. I hope you guys have learned a lot from this video, and I'm sure with practice, you will get the job offer that you wanted. With that, that's it for today's video, and I'll see you in my next one. This video is for those of you who are looking for quick and effective ways to speak more like an English native speaker in an interview. First up, use adverbs as much as you can. Adverbs can be a great manifest of English fluency if properly used. When used to describe verbs, they help to paint a clear and vivid image of how the actions are being taken. In a job interview, saying I completed the task tells a completely different story than saying I proactively finished the task because the adverb proactively describes how the action is being taken. It indicates that you can take initiative and work independently. When adverbs are used on adjectives, they help to add more information as well as a degree of intensity. My client was satisfied with me sounds a lot weaker than my client was extremely satisfied with me. Frequently used adverbs include extraordinarily, exceptionally, absolutely, slightly, hardly, etc. Number two, pay attention to coherence in your expression. If you are sharing experience, use conjunctions to indicate the sequence of the event, making it easier for the audience to follow. You can always start by saying initially, firstly, at first, which then can be followed by next, then, subsequently, finally, etc. When you want to add a point, don't just say and, Try using furthermore, what's more, in addition, additionally. Number three, master a couple of idioms to blow your interviewers away every now and then during the interview. 你看,我这里就偷偷用了一个 idiom, which is blow somebody away. 意思是让某人惊艳. Using idioms demonstrate that English is just a piece of cake for you. Piece of cake 又是一个小的 idiom, 意思是非常简单,对你来说,说英语只是小菜一碟. But don't jump on the bat wagon. Jump on the bat wagon的意思是跟风,随潮流。千万不要肆意地跟风使用这些 idiom. 为什么呢? You need to learn the idioms inside out and use them only after you've completely wrapped your head around it. 第四个谚语来了, wrap one's head around something. 意思是完全理解某事. Number four, this is a friendly reminder. During the interview, please take your time. Speak at a pace that is comfortable for you with ease and confidence. It's okay to be slow if you've managed to avoid making grammatical mistakes at this pace. And when you struggle, don't hesitate to use fillers because just like us Chinese, English native speakers also need to collect their thoughts while speaking. But instead of saying Chinese fillers like uh, try using English fillers like um, hmm, actually, you know what? Like what I'm trying to say is Last idiom of the day, all good things must come to an end. And so does my video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you some other time.
people, welcome back to my channel. English learning starts with listening. Listening to English, even just as background, can help you significantly with developing a sense of feel for the language. Your brain will be subconsciously listening to all the English materials that you're playing and absorbing tons of information without you even knowing. I personally benefited a lot from listening to English videos. And it's very important to know that English learning videos are not just limited to TED Talks or global news. As a matter of fact, everything in English can be used as English learning materials. And sometimes it can be extremely interesting. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you guys some of the most interesting English videos that you can listen to online for free. And all the videos are posted with official transcript which means that you can basically copy paste all of them into your own Word doc if you want to study them in further details. Without further ado, let's just jump right into it. You wanna get like me, spend some days on me. 第一就是 Vogue。Vogue 呢是一本综合性的时尚生活类杂志，涵盖的内容呢包括有时装、美妆、美容等等。除了杂志之外呢，会出一些相关的视频。请到大部分都是一些演艺名人、超模或者是时尚美妆达人等等。你只需要在网页上输入三 w 点 vogue dot com slash video， 就可以找到他们所有的视频系列。我最喜欢的几个系列包括第一就是 Seventy Three Questions， 这个视频系列呢有点像。快问快答是一镜到底的采访一些当红的明星，并且是在他们的家中进行的。涉及到的问题呢，其实很多都是日常我们在和朋友交流的时候会遇到的问题，或者是有一些会让我想起是雅思口语考试的感觉，所以就还蛮适合用来灌耳朵的。这个系列呢，已经出了六十九集，他采访过的明星已经非常非常多了，就包括比如说演员的 Nicole Kidman。Emma Stone, Zendaya, 歌手里面 Taylor Swift, Selena Gomez, Lady Gaga, Cardi B, 超模里面包括 Carly Kloss, Gigi Hadid, Kendall Jenner， 还有包括网红系列的 Kylie Jenner 和 Liza。Yeah, come on in. Guess who's here? What's up? Zendaya. Hey. Thank you so much for having me by. I know how busy you are. I'm gonna ask you 73 questions. Let's do it. Okay. Now, question number one. Where does your name originate? Okay, so technically it's a long story, but it's based off a word that means to give thanks. That's pretty. Vogue's 的第二个系列我比较喜欢的就是 Beauty Secret 系列。这个系列呢是邀请一些一线的明星，却像美妆博主一样，分享他们日常护肤美妆的流程。这个视频系列的亮点就是，所有的视频都是在这些名人自己的浴室里面完成的，非常有创意，也是 Vogue 最受欢迎的系列之一。他们目前已经上传了两百多个视频了，邀请了各路大咖，那就比如说像我比较喜欢的歌手。Troy Sivan, Madison Beer, 还有包括超模圈里面的能上的基本上都上过了，像当红的炸子鸡 Kaya Gerber, Bella Hadid, Hailey Bieber， 当然也有超模中的超模参与录制这个系列的，像 Adriana, Rosie, Candice, Alexandra, Dawson 等等，甚至他们还邀请了一些韩国的，但是英语为母语的一些明星，比如说 Jessica, Tiffany， 他们都有上过这个系列。Hi guys, I'm Candice and And I'm gonna show you how I do just an everyday glowy sun-kissed look. Instead of just putting the pencil straight on to really get it in the lash line, I like to do like from the middle out. That is me ready for meetings and a day out in the town. Vogue 的这些系列是不断更新的，而且非常有意思，一集只有十几分钟。除了有这两个比较经典的系列之外，他们也会一直在不停地推出新的系列。就比如说最近出的一个系列叫《Life in Looks》，这个系列的话是邀请了一些明星去回顾他们职业生涯当中的一些经典造型，所以请的都是一些影视歌的常青树。但是最近呢，他们请了一个还算比较年轻的叫 Selena Gomez。虽然说她比较年轻，但是她是一个童星，所以她能够回顾的造型也是蛮多的。我还蛮希望 Vogue 可以继续出这个系列的，因为我想看到更多我认识的比较年轻的明星可以上这个系列，然后去回顾他们的经典造型。Hi Vogue, I'm Selena Gomez, and we're going to go through my life in looks so far. 
Uh, this is Versace in 2013. It was at the VMAs. I loved this dress. I remember feeling for the first time like a woman. The dress is a statement. It's going to feel like I'm carrying this Versace piece of art down a carpet. So this was one of the first times where I was like, all right, I'm feeling it, feeling myself. 除了这个 Vogue 还出了一个最近的系列，我在我之前的视频里面有提到过，就是 Candle 的一个系列叫做 Open Minded Unpacking Anxiety。这个系列呢，一共是有四集，是由 Candle 来作为主要嘉宾、常驻嘉宾或者说主持人，来和观众分享他对抗焦虑症的这个经历。他每一集呢，都会邀请到一个心理学方面的专家和他进行对话，帮助大家更加了解焦虑症，也了解如何对抗焦虑症。同样，我也是非常希望 Vogue 可。可以继续出这样的专题系列，因为不仅仅从英语上来说，我们可以学到很多的专业术语，而且可以帮助我们去了解一些可能。在国内还不太有关注度的心理健康问题。第二 ，Vanity Fair， 中文的翻译叫名利场，它是美国非常著名的一本文化生活类的时尚杂志。和 Vogue 一样，除了杂志之外，他们现在也有剖一些名人采访的视频，但它涵盖的内容要比 Vogue 广很多，因为它不仅仅是时尚，也包括了像政治、艺术、摄影等等。那么它邀请的嘉宾呢，也会更加多样一些。同样也是只需要在网站上输入三 w 点 vanitycare dot com slash video 就可以找到它所有的系列。我比较喜欢的系列之一就是 Time Capsule 这个系列的话，采访了 Billy Eilish， 而且是用同样的问题连续采访了 Billy Eilish 三年。他从一个默默无闻的小歌手成长为一个家喻户晓的大明星，你就可以看到他每一年的成长。除了 Billy Eilish 这个系列呢，还采访了。Andrew Young, Andrew Young 呢是二零一九年参与美国总统选举的一位竞选人，他是为数不多的亚裔竞选者，他也是接受了名利场的采访，也是同样的套路，就是在二零一九年和二零二零年用同样的问题去问到他。从二零一九年的视频里面，你就可以感受到他刚刚参与美国总统竞选的时候的满腔热血，但是在二零二零年，他其实已经败选下来的，所以。所以你就可以看到，说它的一些沉淀，我觉得整个系列就真的非常有意思，真的希望他们可以再去采访一些其他的名人。I'm Andrew Yang. Today is April 4th, 2019. February 25th, 2020. I'm running for president to try and make this country something I'm proud to pass along to my children. I believe by running for president, I could wake us up to the real situation we're in, and then. Activate real solutions.、Uh, well, the internet has me at 14%,、um, and so I will use the internet as the arbiter of collective wisdom. I can categorically say that the odds of my winning the Democratic nomination are zero. <laughs> 第二个我比较喜欢的名利场的系列叫做 Lie Detector， 顾名思义就是把测谎仪绑到明星、演员或者政治人物的身上，然后去问到他们一些问题。我比较喜欢的几集就有网红 David Dobrik， 还有就是《饥饿游戏》的女主角 Jennifer Lawrence，《Queer Eye》粉熊救兵的五个小姐妹、大姐妹。老姐妹，<笑>他们也有接受过这个 light detector 的采访，我觉得也都还蛮有意思的。I'm so scared. All right, what do you guys want to know? I can't breathe. Is your name David Dobrik? Yes. Is this your girlfriend? <laughs> no. I'm so sorry. That's okay. That's you, not your girlfriend, correct? Okay. Son of a bitch. 那名利场还有一个我比较喜欢的系列呢，是和电影相关的，它叫 Notes on the Scene。这个系列呢，相对而言就比较专业化一点。它是邀请了电影电视剧的导演去解说拍摄的电影电视剧当中的某些场景的，去讲解说，哎，为什么我们的镜头要这样放置，包括场景内的色彩布局、演员的位置、演员的台词等等。他们有邀请《权力的游戏》的导演去解说电视剧《权力的游戏》，还有就是他们邀请了最近。
上映的《花木兰》的导演以及男主角，还有就是刘亦菲参加了这个节目，解说《花木兰》里面的一些场景的设置的原因。喜欢电影的朋友也可以去看一下这个系列。I am Yi Fei and I play Mulan. This is no t o n s e Scene is the first time we see Mulan, who is known as Hua Jun in this part of the movie, fight with Hong Hui. Both of them are conscripts in a training camp. Right before this scene, Mulan has to contend with both being in disguise as a man, but mostly not being able to show the strength she has. In order to maintain her disguise, she has to disguise all of herself. 最后一本杂志真的是。我自己个人特别特别特别特别喜欢的 Architecture Digest， 顾名思义 ，Architecture 是跟建筑有关的，是全球非常著名的一本建筑设计杂志。我个人就对室内装修特别特别感兴趣，就自己虽然买不起房，但是看看总可以吧。而 Architecture Digest 呢，除了有杂志之外，他们还出了非常多的视频的系列。我自己特别特别喜欢的就是 Open Door 这个 series 呢，一共有八十集，也是邀请到了非常非常多的各路的明星。这个系列呢，主要就是由 Architecture Digest 带着他们的摄像师走进这些演员名人的家中，去参观他们用钱堆出来的室内装修。我就会拿一个小本子在旁边记，哎，这个东西它的英文是什么？还有旁边备注一下，如果未来有一天我能买得起房，我也要。要装修这个东西进去，那我已经看烂的有三集，其中就包括 Troy s i v a n 他的房子呢是在澳大利亚的海边，然后是一栋比较老的房子，但他重新进行了装潢，说海边的房子的那种莫名的舒适感就。I would 100% die in this house if I ever get the chance. Ah,、oh, hey, AD, what's up? It's Troy s i v a n This is my house in Melbourne. Please, please come inside. Make yourselves at home. Yeah, I have been living in America for the last like maybe like five or six years, and I have been so homesick the entire time. And then when everything got crazy in March, I came back to Australia. To be with my family, and I just feel so at home that I wanted to put down roots, and I found this house, and I was just like, done. 还有一个就是我也特别特别喜欢他的家的装修，就是 Dakota. Dakota 是五十度灰的女主角，她的房子大部分你能看到的都是木质的，她也有自己的一个小院子，有种自己的植物。而且你在欣赏这些房子、这些画面的同时，你还可以学英语。这何乐而不为呢？就特别好的光耳材料。Hi AD, I'm Dakota. Welcome to my house. I moved here about five years ago, and it was the second house I looked at, and the first house I ever bought. I love wood and I love light and windows and green, so I just fell in love. Ryan Murphy lived in this house first, and he loved it so much too. But his family got bigger, so he moved out. <laughs> Lucky. 除了我提到的这些系列之外，这三本杂志还有其他非常非常多的系列，大家可以去看。你只要上到他们的官网，就可以跳出来非常非常多可以去观赏贯耳的系列。它都是有英文字幕的，甚至是有英文啊文档可以去直接给你复制粘贴，去做进一步的学习。当然，如果你想要看中文字幕的话，你只需要去国内的一些视频网站去搜杂志的名称、系列的名称，加上参演的名人的。名称就可以找到中文的翻译版本，因为参与这些系列录制的都是非常非常的大牌，拥有非常非常强大的粉丝基础，翻译这些采访的视频，所以真的是非常非常好的，可以用来。作为英语学习的视频，不仅赏心悦目、有意思，而且还可以贯耳练英语。So I guess that is it for today's video, and I will see you in my next one.
welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to introduce you guys to a universally applicable framework that answers the most important question in the English job interview, which is tell me about yourself. By asking this question, the interviewer is trying to see if you're qualified and fit for the position you've applied to. Our answers need to be precise, direct, and relevant. Without further ado, let's just jump right into the video. 第一部分介绍基本信息。如果是校招学生，可以直接套用以下句型，交代清楚教育背景。My name is Yuan Yuan. I graduated with a master's degree in international business from Tufts University, where I acquired the fundamentals on marketing, accounting, and negotiation. 一定要注意，所提的学习内容最好是与应聘岗位的具体要求一一对应。举例来。说，如果你应聘的是 IT 岗位，那就没必要浪费时间宣扬自己学过服装设计。第二部分，分享自己实习时或做项目时的相关优秀成果。论述的框架可以大概理解为我做了什么，成果是什么，以及我的成长是什么。以我自己为例 ，During my latest internship, I worked on a cross-border e-commerce project where I initiated a social media campaign and supervised the design of an online flagship store. Which eventually resulted in X number of GSV. My experience on this project has built up my proficiency in cross-functional communication as well as a deeper understanding in the food industry. 这里特别注意，介绍自己以往经验的时候，不要总是用 I was responsible for A, B, and C. 不仅体现不出你的积极主动，而且面试官很难理解你的具体职责。我们一定要尽量多使用 action verbs， 例如 initiated, constructed, enhanced. Optimized, simplified, arranged, conducted, coordinated, and operated. 第三部分谈一谈未来，强调我与公司的适配度很高，围绕三个重点展开。第一，我热爱公司所处行业。第二，我赞同公司价值文化。第三，我有能力为公司做出贡献。Moving forward, I would like to work for a company like yours that specializes in nurturing foreign brands in the Chinese market. More importantly, I am also a huge believer in delivering happiness through delicious food. I believe my experience and passion for the food industry will allow me to become a strong asset for your company. 这一部分我们应该对公司所处行业、公司企业文化以及公司生意未来愿景有所了解，并且强调你与公司的观点一致，适配度很高。最后加一个干净利落的结尾，告诉对方你已经说完了。That's all. Thank you so much for your time. 以上就是今天的万能模板。其实掌握万能模板不难，难的是获得一次面试的机会，尤其是在今天这个严峻的就业大环境下。所以我想趁今天的这个视频，特别和留学生朋友们强调一下，你们在外企应聘中是很有优势的，一定要充分利好自己留学生这个身份标签。比如，你可以在 Boss 直聘上去认证自己的留学。生身份不仅可以筛选出留学生专属的职位列表，而且公司在海淘人才时也可以通过留学生标签直接筛选到你。除此之外 ，Boss 直聘每周四还会举行留学生专属的待岗直播，不仅有导师和 HR 现场改简历、模拟面试，而且还可以在直播间里一键投递简历。I hope today's video was helpful, and I understand all the struggle in finding a job. So I wish you guys all the best luck in your next job interview. With that, that's it for today's video, and I'll see you in my next one. Hello, people! Welcome back to my channel. So I am here today to teach you guys a method that I have been using in order to hone my English listening skills. I genuinely believe that listening is key to being able to have a conversation with a native speaker because. Only after you're able to understand what he or she is saying will you be able to interact. You know, give a response. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, save, comment, just in case you lose track. And without further ado, let's just jump right into it. 练听力，首先我们该用什么材料去练呢？我这里给大家推荐一个网站，叫做五幺 VOA。只要输入五幺 VOA.com 就可以找到了。
VOA 呢是 Voice of America， 它是美国的一个无线广播电台，是由美国的主播用一些比较通俗简单的词汇去播报新闻的这么一个平台。在五幺 VOA 这个网站上面有非常非常多的听力材料可以供大家去做练习。我在这里呢推荐大家可以用电脑去登录这个网站，因为只有电脑登录我们才可以把这个音频下载下来，后期去调节速度呢就会更加方便一些。这这里呢，我会分步骤仔细的给大家讲解该怎么去操作啊。在听听力之前呢，我们要到五幺 voa com 上面去下载下来一个音频，在五幺 voa 上任意选择一个音频，点击下载，跳转到黑色界面之后，右键下载音频为。保存音频，下载完了之后呢，我们可以用电脑上面已经有的第三方的播放软件去播放它。我自己选的呢是 QQ 音乐，它是可以调节速度的，从零点五到一点五倍速都可以。下载完音频之后，我们就可以正式来练习听力啦。其实有一点点像我们小学、初中的时候做的听写啊，但是不是听写一个单词，而是听写一整篇文章。我推荐大家可以去使用一分钟左右这个长度就可以了，因为太长了，其实我们。的这个思维也会跟不上。正式开始的第一步就是我们要去元素。听一遍这个听力材料。那我选择的是东京奥运会的新闻报道，大家可以听一下。Grace Luzak had left competitive rowing and taken a job, but a move toward gender equity at the Tokyo Olympic Games. Brought her back into the boat. 这个时候，如果你想要把它全部记下来，几乎是不可能的，因为它的速度很快。你只需要把重点关注在两个点上就可以了，只需要把每个句子的主语以及动词听出来就 OK。这个其实非常有利于我们以后自己去造句啊，因为英文和中文的这个造句习惯是不太一样的。像我们中文就特别喜欢用人做主语，我怎么怎么样，他怎么怎么样。但其实英文里面很多。时候是习惯用不同的方式去找主语的，比如说我们可以用 doing 啊，或者用一些比较简单的名词啊，或者形式主语去做主语。第一遍听的时候，我们就要去特别留心它的主语到底是什么，以及这个主语它相应的跟的这个动词是什么。这个呢，就是我第一遍听的。其实你看到我只记下来大概有六个句子，每一个句子的主语是谁，以及它后面对应的动词是什么。第二遍我们要把速度调节到零点五倍速，甚至是更。慢，跟着听写出来他所讲的东西，以慢速的形式播放的时候呢，我们最最最主要的就是能够记下主语和动词。第二个关键点就是没听到的地方，我一定要去划出横线来。大家可以看到我这个标记为二的这个部分呢，就是我第二遍时候以零点五倍速听写出来的内容。那你可以看到我不会的地方，或者没有听清楚、没来得及写的地方，我就用一些横线把它标识出来了，比较。比较短的我就用比较短的，长的句子我就用长的横线。第三个小技巧就是，如果你实在来不及写有些单词，你可以用一些小的符号去表示。比如说我在听写这篇东京奥运会的时候，里面就提到有个单词是 number， 然后写 number 的时候我有点来不及，我就直接画了一个井号键。当然还有别的，比如说 people 这个单词，如果你来不及写，你可以去画个小人。除了用符号之外，如果遇到了一些专有的名词或者是地方，我们也可以缩写的形式。是来提高速度啊、呃！我之前听了一篇河南的文章，我的河南就是 H N， 然后郑州就是 Z Z， 可以用这样的小办法去标记出来自己铁定知道的单词，然后我们可以根据自己第二遍听的情况调节速度之后呢，再来听第三遍。像我，因为第二遍其实已经大致全部都听出来了，所以我第三遍呢就把速度调快，把我这些空格的地方没来得及写的，用换一个颜色的笔呀、啊、写上去。但是每个人的情情况是不一样的，所以这个第三遍的速度可能大家都是不一样的。如果你觉得这个第二遍的速度我刚才是完全跟不上，那这个时候我可以再把速度调慢一点。我们的目标就是，不管你听多少遍，最后都基本上能够全部写出来。听不出来的，我都有对应的横线去给到它这个空位，我觉得就 OK 了。当然，如果你只在某个单词或者某个表达上面实在纠结听不出来，你就可以回到相应的那个位。位置去
反复播放这个单词，然后根据你自己听到的这个单词的读音去拼写出来，你觉得可能对的一个拼写就可以了。就比如说我这个上面有一个人的名字叫 Grace Luzak， 我不知道怎么拼，所以我就大致拼一个感觉出来就可以了。反复听遍听力材料，直到我们基本上对自己写下来的东西已经有一些信心了，不会的单词都有特殊的位置给到他了之后呢？我们就可以调回元素，再去对一遍。像我就会把我刚才没有听到的复数给它补齐。听写完成之后呢，我们要回到五幺 voa.com 去对比它的原文，看看自己到底哪里出了问题。用一支红色的笔把对照原文之后，自己没有写出来的东西或者拼错的单词全部都标记在下面。其实没有听出来的单词有两个原因，第一个可能就是这个单词你自己念的时候就念错了，所以你。没有办法听辨出来这个单词到底是什么。还有一个原因就是你这个单词真的就是完全不认识。有了这一篇背过的原文之后呢，我们就可以去做一个精读，用黄色的高光笔把我觉得比较好的表达或者不认识的表达标记出来，然后去学习一下。比如说这篇文章里面呢提到一个单词叫 competitive rowing， row 这个单词呢它是划船的意思。但如果你把这个 competitive 加在这个 rowing 之前呢，我们就不是那种惬意的去小和。上面划船的意思了。Competitive 的词根是 competition， compete， 它是竞争的意思。所以当你把这个 rowing 前面加上 competitive 之后啊，这个单词的意思就变成了竞技赛艇的感觉。不管是什么样的运动，如果我在前面加了 competitive， 这个单词的意思就变成了竞技式的这个比赛。还有就是下面这个叫 gender equity， gender 是性别， equity 的意思呢是平等。所以 gender equity 是一个固定的表达，就是男女平等。还有最后一个我觉得比较有意思的单词就是这个 additional。additional 这个词呢，你看它前面是 a d d， 所以它原本的意思其实就是加、添加。所以当它变成 additional 这样的一个形容词的意思，其实就是外加的、添加的。所以 additional spots 的意思是另外新添的一些位置。那做完精读之后，我们还可以再去添加一步来巩固我们的这个听力练习。首先就是在你精读完整篇文章之后，理解了每一个句子、每一个表达之后，把听力。拉到 1.5 倍速，来考验一下自己能不能在这个非常快的语速下面听辨出每一个单词，理解每一个单词。它可以帮助我们去锻炼我们的反应能力，因为很多情况下我们在生活当中需要去听到的，不管是英文材料也好，还是和外国人的交流也好，他们的语速都是非常快的。除了这个调节速度去练反应之外呢，我们还可以在接下来的几天里面反复播放这一段一分钟的英文材料。让自己能够对这里面的表达、单词、读音去加深记忆，整一套练习下来，其实对我们英语的多方面都进行了一个打磨，不管是听辨。拼写、理解，还是我们的口语表达，其实都会有或多或少的帮助。真的是非常推荐大家可以这样去练习。Okay, so that is it for today's video, and I'll see you in the next one. Hello, people! Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to include everything I know about memorizing vocabulary. So please don't forget to subscribe, like, save, just in case you lose track. Like many of you guys, I hate memorizing vocabulary. I consider it the most time-consuming activity in the entire world, second to none. The only time that I was forced to memorize lists of vocabulary was when I was prepping for GRE, which requires more than 12,000 words, almost twice the amount for IELTS. Although I may not be able to remember all of those 12,000 words that I have memorized, the techniques that I have used have forever changed the way I learn English, making vocabulary accumulation even more efficient for me. So in today's video, I am going to share with you guys the techniques that I used to memorize those 12,000 words. And without further ado, let's just jump right into it. 
在正式分享我背单词的方法之前呢，我特别想要和大家来强调一下英语单词词汇教材的重要性。词汇教材能够帮助我们去掌握英语的基本的造词规律，尤其是去了解词源和词缀这两个概念。市面上比较有名的词汇教材包括蒋真老师的《英语词汇的奥秘》，还有这本《Vocabulary Builder》，还有一本叫做《Word Power Made Easy》。这些教材呢，清一色都会帮助我们去更加了解英语词汇词根这个概念。就拿蒋真老师的英语词汇的奥秘来做例子，这本教材里面讲解了二百五十二个词根，那每一个词根呢，它都会详细分解成一些小的分支。有的时候一个词根它可以带着二十多个单词、三十多个单词一起去讲解，所以就会。大大提高你的效率，让你一下子就能背出一串的单词来。比如说 ，vis v i s 这个词根，这个词根的话是和我们眼睛看有关的，所以很多单词都可以由这个看去引申出来。比如说 ，visible、invisible、visit、television、supervise， 然后再比如说 a u d i a u d i 这个词根，它是和我们听东西的听有关的。Audience, audible, audibility, audition， 这些词都是和听有关的。那除了英语词汇的奥秘，其实《Vocabulary Builder》这本书我也有，但是因为这本书里面全部都是英文，所以其实阅读它本身就带有一定的难度，比较适合那些中高级的玩家去尝试。这本书比中文的那版比较好的就是。啊、呃，蒋真老师只是把这个词根告诉你说，比如说 V I S， 他有看的意思。这本书里面呢，就更加详细的告诉你说，为什么这些词根有它原来的意思。那比如说这本书的第一个单词就是 Benny， B E N E Benny。那 Benny 是来自于拉丁语，它的意思呢是 Well。其实很多，我们甚至在现在的西班牙语、法语、意大利语里面还能够听到这个 “bunny” 的类似音啊，比如说比较常见的就是法语里面的 “bonjour”， 这个 “bonjour” 的 “bon” 它最开始就是从这个 “bunny” 来的，所以 “bunny” 这个词就是和“好”相关的。那么引申出来的有很多单词，比如说 “benediction”、“benefactor”、“beneficiary”、“benevolence”， 这些词都是和“好”有关的。除了词根之外，其实这些书里面还要讲解词缀。那么词缀呢，分为两个，第一个是前缀，第二个是后缀。前缀呢，比较常见的就比如说 pre p r e pre， 它表示的是前面，所以有很多带有 pre 的单词都是表示什么什么前。比如说 pre war 就是战前，与之相对的就有 post post 表示呢是后面。比如说我们的 post war。战后 ，postpone， 推迟。后缀呢，其实大多都是和我们单词的词性有关的。比如说 ，a g e， 这个就是我们的名词的后缀。很多带有 a g e 的单词，它本身就是名词。比如说 ，percentage， shortage， language。再比如说 ，i b l e， 这个就是形容词的后缀。比较多的就有 sensible， conductible， resistible， flexible。所以我就特别推荐大家能够去拥有这样一本的英语的词汇的教材，在背单词的同时，就把这个教材当成是课外书来看，可以帮助你更加有意思的，然后更加高效的去记住单词。那具体如何去记单词呢？首先，我们需要拥有一本合适的笔记本。我自己特别推荐的就是这个无印良品的 A 5大小的不易透页双环笔记本。为什么这么具体呢？其实我觉得背单词、选择笔记本也是非常非常重要。像这样子的 A 5的大小，其实非常适合携带，不会太小，也不会太大，而且它是比较薄的，它只有四十八张，所以很快就能。写完有成就感，就激励着我能够再去写一本，再去继续背单词。好，选择好笔记本之后呢，我们就开始正式的背诵了。那基本上大家背单词都会有一本这样的红宝书，或者是啊单词列表啊。那我今天就用我之前用的 GRE 词汇精选的 Word List Eighteen 来给大家做一个简单的示范。首先，第一步就是我们要写上日期，而且要具体到
时间，因为这个涉及到我们后期周期性的背诵，写上我们这次背的 list。写完这个小标题之后，我们就要来过单词的列表。不会的单词呢，你要抄写到自己的这本笔记本上面来。那关于这个抄写的排版呢，我特别建议大家能够左右分离，就一边用来写英文单词，另一边呢用来写单词的中文意思，而且最好是能够把它的词性也一并抄下来。必要的时候呢，也可以写下一些词组或者短语。这样的排版呢，就非常方便我们后期周期性的去背，因为你只要这样子一折。后面的中文意思就没有了，所以你就可以看着这个英文去回忆它的中文是什么意思。背诵的时候的技巧呢，我再来给大家详细的讲解一下。这里面呢有五点非常重要。第一点就是我们不能够盲目的去相信手里的词汇书，哪怕是这样子人手一本的红宝书，它也是会有非常多的漏洞。所以我建议大家时间允许的话，尽量把每一个单词都用有道词典去查一下，然后去看一下克林斯和牛津他们是怎么去解释这个单词的意思的。而且查单词的过程当中，我们最好是能够去听一下这个单词是如何发音的，或者是上嘴念一下这个单词。因为声音其实可以帮助我们加深对这个单词的记忆，而且你想一下，很多时候单词是会出现在听力考试里面的，所以你去听一下的话，会帮助你在听力考试里面更快的辨别出这个单词。第二个小技巧就是，有的时候你去记它的中文意思，倒不如去记它的英文同义词。就比如说，我这里有个单词叫 rudimentary， 它给的中文意思是初步的、未经发展的，但其实它的替换词的意思，或者说它的近义词是 elementary 或者 primary。Elementary school 本来就是小学的意思嘛，就是最低级的那一档，所以 rudimentary 就是初步的、最开始的那一级。这样子去记有什么好处呢？就其实雅思考试很多时候考的都是我们单词的替换的概念，就你要在听力里面听到这个单词之后，反射出来说它的替换词是什么和什么。所以直接在背单词的时候，就以替换词的形式去背，会很大程度的帮助你的听力考试和阅读考试的成绩。第三个技巧就是，我们要去增加一些画面感，因为很多单词它都非常。干就是前无古人后无来者那种感觉，就比如说我这里面几个单词，一个叫 rowdy， 它给的意思呢是吵闹的，不知道该怎么去记，非常干，对不对？所以我们就要去增加一些画面感，让自己可以更好的记忆这个单词。那其实这个词汇精选里面就提供了一个画面啊，他说。A rowdy dance party 就是用 rowdy 这个词去修饰舞会。那你闭上眼睛想想，舞会一般都是怎么样的？就大家都穿着那种非常大的那种蓬蓬裙，你踩我，我踩你。不管是现代的、古代的这种 dance party， 都是乱糟糟的，对不对？所以就会一下子把这个画面感和这个单词捆绑在一起。那你记这个单词就会有一种稍微有所依托了的感觉。再比如有一个单词 sap。S A P sap， 它的意思呢叫耗尽，但这个词也很干，你怎么去记 sap 耗尽？我铁定保证你背了这个单词，第二天就忘记了。那怎么办呢？我们就要去用画面感去结合起来记这个单词。查过它的意思之后，我发现了它一个特别好的小的短语，就是 sap one's energy。就是耗尽一个人的精力，那这时候我就要闭上眼睛去描述出一个画面感，就是最近我画面感特别强的就是我的侄女，就我带我侄女玩这一整天下来，我基本上就，你知道吗？死了 s a p my energy， 然后上面就坐着我的侄女，用这个我侄女耗尽我精力的这个画面感，我去把它捆绑记忆起来。第四个小技巧就是要多问为什么。就比如说，我背的这个单词里面有一个叫 rugged， 它给的意思叫高低不平的，我就会想问为什么？因为 rugged 这个词我是知道的，地毯的意思。为什么地毯这么舒服的东西会变成形容词之后就变成高低不平的呢？其实它给的解释是这样子的 ：rug 地毯，相对于。木地板和瓷砖地板来说，它本身就是会有高低不平的感觉，就会有那种踩屎感，对不对？所以 rugged 引申出来的形容词的意思就是高低不平的
一定要多问为什么，多去查。虽然说查的这个过程可能是耗时间的，但是查过之后，这记这个单词肯定记得更牢一些。最后一个技巧就是你要去发挥自己的想象力，能串起来的单词尽量我们就自主的把它串起来。就比如说我背的这个单词里面只有三组词是串在一起的 s a l i n s a l u b r i o u s s a l u t a r y 这三组词呢，都是由一个词根来的，就是 salt， s a l t， salt。sailing 这个就比较好记了， salt 本身是盐，那么 sailing 呢是形容词，含盐的意思。但是 salubrious 这个词呢，有到词典上面的翻译是比较宜居的，你就会去想说， salt 本身是盐的意思，对不对？那哪里的水是含盐比较高的？那就是海，对不对？那么海边的城市是不是非常宜居的？是啊，所以 salubrious 的意思就是宜居的。那同样的，我也要去发挥自己的想象力，说 salutary 这个单词的意思怎么把它引申过来？因为 salutary 呢，它的意思是那些一开始可能不太好的经历，但是后期就比较磨练人的经历啊。那其实这个跟盐也有关系啊。你想，比如说我们受伤了，就会用盐去作为一个消毒的作用，后期的这个伤口的修复可能会更加快一点。盐有这个功能啊。那这个词 salutary， 它其实就是讲的这个过程，就是一开始可能会比较痛苦，但是后期会有比较大的成效，就是这种比较磨练人的经历，就像你这个盐撒在伤口上一样。这个就是你在背诵单词第一遍的时候可以去做的这些事情。抄写下来之后，我们要去做的就是反复。其实背单词真的没有别的什么，就是要不停的反复。那像我这样的排版就特别适合大家去反复记忆，因为你只要折一下就可以直接去背。而且因为我中间这块是留了非常大的空白的，所以你可以直接在中间去划一些正字，就是你抄写这个单词之后。后第二天，或者是睡前，或者隔几天之后，你再想去背这个单词，你看着这个英文的单词去回忆它中文。如果你想不起来，那么这个时候你就在这个英文单词后面去划一个正字。后期再去重复这个周期的时候，你只需要去背那些正字比较多的单词就 OK 了。如果可能的话，肯定是每天都去背一遍，这个记忆的效果是最好的。但是从这个时间的效率上来讲的话，我。建议大家可以在你抄写这个单词之后的十二小时之后，啊，或者是那一天的睡前。第二个就是在隔一天，第三个就是隔三天，第四次背就是隔一周之后，第五次背就是隔半个月之后。然后你可以在考前再去全部过一遍这个单词。那我觉得这个是按照每个人考试的这个时间的准备可以去有所调动的。还有一件特别特别重要的事情，我不知道大家有没有这种。经历啊，就是你背了一个单词之后，可能很多时候你就会忘记，不管你背多少遍都会忘记。但如果你在做阅读的时候，或者是在做听力、看电视的时候，又看到了这个单词，那么这个单词对于你的记忆的呃程度来说，就会加深非常非常多，比你背五六遍可能记忆更深一点。今天的视频的最后一个建议就是。在背单词的这个整个过程当中，一定不要忘记去有一定的输入，啊，不管你是什么样的形式的输入，阅读也好，听力也好，看电视剧、电影也好，最好最好的这种可能性就是你当天背的单词刚好出现在了你输入的过程当中，这样这个单词能够背下来的可能性就会高非常非常多。以上就是我关于背单词的分享啦，希望能够。帮助到你们了。后期我也可能会带着大家一起去背背单词。So that is it for today's video, and I'll see you in my next one. Hello, people! Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is about IELTS. I've taken IELTS two times and have scored an eight for my speaking. I've also taught IELTS speaking in the institution. In today's video, I have partnered with Cambly Tutors to give you guys the best tips and hacks to get the score you want. If you're struggling with IELTS speaking, you don't want to miss this video. Without further ado, let's just jump right into the video. A lot of students they have a problem with fluency. In IELTS, it's important that you speak, 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 speak. I'm not going to instantly correct you.、Mm -hmm. If you make a mistake and I'm like instantly correct, instantly correct, you don't get to practice fluency. Just remember, in the test, the faster you speak, the more questions you will be asked. So don't slow down too much, but you can modulate your speech a little bit. 
you have any ideas, like a different way to say it, the reason I encourage you to do this is because I've heard you say really stressful. Too many times. Three or four times. Yeah, exactly. In IELTS, there is always a way to level up your language. Okay. Okay? You want to try to get some idioms in there. Find a list of idioms, pick three or four that you like, and mm -hmm. try to consistently put them into your speech. You can think about an IELTS speaking test question that you can answer without idiom. Our brain memorizes information the best when it associates one piece of information to another. When it comes to idioms, you should be really careful in, because some idioms are old fashioned. They're not usually used in, in everyday conversation. Like it rained cats and dogs. Trust me, it's not a good idea to use it. It's always a struggle to find the right words and idioms to use in the proper context, which is why I love Kimberly so much. Kimberly is an online English learning platform that enables me to receive feedback right off the bat from a native speaker. Honestly, my English has gotten a bit rusty and it's so nice to have experienced Cambly tutors to provide me the most authentic expressions whenever I struggle. It's always nice for me to block a time to work on complicated issues and projects. To block a time to work on. Block, like... To lock, L-O-C-K. Yeah, lock, yes. Okay, okay. To find a block of time to work. Ah, uh, okay. But with a e-book, it's very, like, robotic and, like, feels very cold. Clinical would be something we would uh, feel is very clinical, almost <laughs> surgical. I would strongly recommend practicing with Cambly tutors on a regular basis before you take your IELTS speaking test. Just type in IELTS to find experienced IELTS speaking coaches. You can use my promo code CIRCLE2022 to get a 15 minute session for free and a 20% off on a monthly subscription. We have English and then we have IELTS. So IELTS is a step above English. So you've got to know your English before you do IELTS. In part one, you've got to answer the reason and the example. A true native speaking answer starts with the example, not the reason. What's your favorite color? I have a wardrobe full of blue clothes. Every time you talk about a garden, People say, oh, you know, and I want to have a house with a garden. And then they move on. No, there are so many things you can describe it by. Mm. The five senses. What do you smell? What do you taste? What do you hear? What do you see? What do you feel? I think your personal element is going to give you a little bit extra points for the magic of your answers. Not often someone is referring to their life as much as you are. And as someone that's heard this a thousand times, it's very refreshing. So continue mm -hmm. in this vein. I hope today's video was helpful. I personally learned so much from these Cambly tutors through the lessons that I've taken. I will leave their names down in the comment section so that you guys can practice with them as well. With that, that's it for today's video and I'll see you in my next one. Hello people, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'll be introducing you guys to a very important concept in learning English, which is called context. 语境在学习英语当中尤其的重要如果你经常能够在阅读当中认识这些单词但一旦遇到自己口语表达就会经常用错单词或者找不到合适的单词那么很有可能就是你在背单词记单词的时候没有结合语境今天这个视频呢我就
，这个时候的意思就变成了警察突击检查一个地方。所以你看，同样的一个单词，如果放在不同的语境下面，其实是可以引申出不同的意思了。那这个小例子呢，其实给了我们一些启示啊。第一个启示就是，查单词的时候一定要去查一下它的词根，不要去盲目的以中文等于英文这样的形式去背。那既然不能用中文等于英文这样的形式去记单词，那该如何去做单词的笔记呢？这里呢，大家其实可以去使用思维导图的形式去记单词。我推荐大家可以去使用一下迅捷画图，用电子思维导图的方式去更加精确的、精准的记到这个单词的意思。以及它该如何使用？打开迅捷画图，点击创建思维导图，新建空白的思维导图。我们只需要这样非常基础的思维导图就可以了。在最左边先打上这个单词 read， 第一个分支输入这个单词的英文释义，然后添加第一个子主题，也就是第一个语境。接着在语境后面输入该语境下 read 的中文释义。再添加一个新的子主题，放在警察的语境下 ，read 的中文意思就变成了突击检查。这样一目了然，学会了单词的用法，而且还理解了不同语境下的意思。第二个单词呢，也是来自于新概念三的一篇课文，是来自于 Lesson One。在这篇文章里面呢，提到了一个单词叫 trail。T R A I L trail， 它给的中文释义呢是一串一系列。那当然，如果你只记了这样的一个中文等于英文的形式的话，你就很有可能在自己口语的表达的时候出现 a trail of events 一系列的事情 ，a trail of TV shows 一系列的电视剧。但这两种说法其实都错。因为 trail 这个单词的词根的意思其实是名词的足迹或者痕迹。该如何去比较深刻的记忆这个单词呢？要放入它合适的语境当中。比如说语境一，我把它想象成是 the criminal left a trail of blood， 罪犯留下了一系列的、一串的他的血迹在他的身后。这个语境是 OK 的，而且可以一下子一目了然，让你知道 a trail of 该怎么使用。第二个语境呢，我们可以把它结合到和身边有关的事情，比如说我的小侄女在家里面玩玩具，她就是那种不懂得自己如何去整理自己去收的，所以她玩到哪里，哪里就有她的痕迹，哪里就有她留下的玩具。所以这个时候我就会经常抱怨她说 ，Why do you always leave a trail of toys behind you？ 你为什么总是在你身后留下这一串的玩具呢？你为啥不收拾呢？虽然他只有一岁啊，我也可以原谅他。那讲到这里呢，我们就刚好可以去记一下“系列”这个单词，它的另一个同义词就是 series。当我如果真的想去说一系列的事情、一系列电视剧的时候，这时候我们不是用的 a trail of。这里我已经理解了为什么不用 a trail of， 那真正应该用的是叫 a series of， a series of events， a series of TV shows。同样的，给我们的启示也是，背单词的时候一定要去查一查它的词根的意思，还有就是我们要学会有效的记笔记。你也可以去使用思维导图的形式，利用迅捷画图去做一个思维导图，更加高效的记住这个单词的意思。同义词呢，也可以用思维导图的形式去记忆。最左边输入系列，第一个子主题就是系列的第一个同义词 trail， 后面的子主题一定要加上它的词根足迹。接着呢，加上这个单词的最常见用法，例如这里的 a trail of， 再输入语境加深记忆。第一个语境是罪犯留下 a trail of blood， 第二个语境呢是侄女留下了 a trail of toys。再回到前面的分支下面，添加一个新的同义词 series， 并输入 series 的最常见用法，也把 series 放入语境，能够更加加深记忆。这样一来，我们就能够非常清晰地知道系列下面的两个同义词的区别以及用法。Okay, so that is it for today's short video, and I'll see you in my next one. Hello, people! Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to give you guys a tour of my small loft slash apartment here in Guangzhou. This apartment slash loft is located on the edge of Haizhou District, right by the Pearl River. There is actually a ferry right downstairs that goes back and forth across the Pearl River. Another important thing to note about this apartment is that this is a service apartment, meaning that some of the rooms are listed. On the market as hotel rooms, whereas some of the rooms are for a longer lease. I like how they put tenants with long.
longer lease further down the corridor so it's not as crowded as you think it would be I pay monthly 4,000 RMB for this room and I really enjoyed my stay here there's also a 7-Eleven right downstairs and a marketplace across the street with that being said let's get on with the room tour Let's start from the TV area. So this TV together with all the other house appliances, this tea table, the couch, the paintings on the wall, they all came with the apartment. And I was very lucky because I was the first one to move into this apartment. So everything was brand new when I first moved in. This little giraffe right here, I bought this giraffe when my niece came to visit and obviously she couldn't take it with her. So for now, it stuck with me. Right under the TV is this built-in TV cabinet. I love categorizing all of my stuff, my belongings, and put them in a home that they belong. So you can see a lot of these paper bags. They are very handy for organizing. I have my face masks, my sunglasses in this paper bag right by the door. So I can grab them when I go out. There is nothing better than coming home and drinking a shot of suju by yourself and enjoying your night so yeah i've emptied these bottles all by myself instead of flowers i have recently built this obsession over plants i think plants are overall better than flowers because flowers when they die they smell so terrible but plants they stay with you. There is more storage space down here. Funny thing is that when I moved to Guangzhou, I started accidentally accumulating a lot of umbrellas. Currently, I have about five umbrellas. I've learned my lesson. Regardless of what the weather report says, I would always carry an umbrella with me. So this is my carriage. This is where I spend most of my time. I have this blanket right here because I just love having the air condition on and just hide under my blanket and watch TV. It is the best thing in the world. On my tea table, first of all, I have put the books that I've been reading here. Ling Li. They give you a duck every time you buy their drink and I've been just painting them. Look how cute they are. I love my room to smell nice. So I bought this from Miniso and it makes your room smell like peach. Okay, so that's my tea table. Let's move on to our kitchen. So this is my kitchen. I'm so happy that I was able to buy so many more magnets. I bought this one when I took my niece to the Changlong Resort. This one is for Guangzhou. Here is the washing machine. The downside of this is that it does not have a built-in dryer. So all of my clothes need to be air dried. This kitchen offers me more than enough counter space that I could ask for, as you can see. But unfortunately, I haven't been cooking that often. Most of my sauces aren't used to it. Guangzhou is such a heaven for foodies. And I just can't get tired of ordering food. So that's why I haven't been cooking that often. Oh, I have this little teapot that my friend got me for my birthday. This kitchen also comes with a sink for washing dishes. And I've put all of my kitchen essentials up on the wall so that I can have more counter space. All of my cups, dishes, an instant noodle, I've put them up in the cabinet. This is my dining table slash office desk. I spend a lot of time here editing videos and working. The most amazing thing about this apartment is the view that you get when you sit here. To protect my back and my neck, from hours and hours of editing. I bought this monitor stand rice. It's good because it comes with two small drawers that I can put miscellaneous stuff in. And I bought this 
keyboard, which is so cute. And I can tuck it under this monitor stand and have more space. And over here is another sink. And this area is mainly for when I do my skincare, makeup. First of all, the counter space is really big so I can put off my brushes, my lipstick. One of my friends bought me this mirror and it lights up. Ta-da! You also have all these small cabinets. I put all of my makeup products, skincare products, my necklaces. Behind this mirror is another cabinet. So I hide stuff that I haven't used behind it and when you close it under the sink is another big cabinet. Worth mentioning here is this little thingy. So this is my bathroom. I originally had a shower rack here, but it fell off the other day and I just didn't see the need to put it back on because I'll be moving out very soon. My sister complained about how narrow the stairs are when she came to visit, especially because I put all of my shoes on one side of the stairs. But honestly, I think it's fine for me because I'm tiny. Let's go upstairs. This is the upstairs bedroom. As for that tapestry, I have put a lot of my stuff in there. Downside of my upstairs space is that it has this out of nowhere in the middle. I have bumped into this for so many times, but it's fine. I know, don't judge me, but I do have a second couch. Originally, I wanted a couch to watch TV from the second floor. You know how you have a chair in a room that you just pile up all the clothes that you wore once but didn't want to wash? This is the chair. Upgraded version. So that is my room. I think I've held back from decorating this place hardcore because I knew that this was only going to be a temporary stay. But overall, I really liked my stay here. I was able to host family and friends here. Oh my god, I'm gonna miss Guangzhou so much. I liked how down-to-earth everyone is. I also loved how friendly and embracing the local people are. I appreciate everyone that I met here. With that, that's it for today's video and I will see you in my next one. People, welcome back to my channel. Today is August 10th. As you can see, I am in a different space right now and that is because my rotation in Guangzhou has officially ended and I've recently moved back to Shanghai. Today is actually my first day of work. The position that I am assigned to still sounds a little bit blurry for me. It's going to be a really worthwhile learning experience quite excited about what's gonna happen. I want to start this vlog because I feel like I failed to keep you guys updated on my life and my work when I was in Guangzhou, probably due to a lack of routine in my life. Everyday work was very different, but since now that I'm back in Shanghai, I think I will start picking up my camera more often and share more aspects of my life. I landed here in Shanghai Sunday afternoon and I spent Sunday and Monday trying to hunt for an apartment. Sunday was no luck, but the first apartment that I saw on Monday was just checking all the boxes that I had. I signed the contract instantly. This is the apartment. I would say it's not perfect, but I think there's a lot of potential. I really look forward to actually being able to stay here for a longer period of time. And I think this time I would go hardcore on decorating this place, which means there will be a lot of content. I have in total 13 packages that I shipped from Guangzhou to Shanghai. I have labeled every one of them and made no on what's in there. It has made this moving process so much easier. The first thing that I need to unpack is my beddings because I need to sleep. And that will be in package number 13, which is this one right here. Ah. 
It's about 8.20. I just ordered food. I really want to use tonight to edit a video that I filmed when I was in Guangzhou, which is a room tour. I have another two vlogs that I need to edit, but I want to get this room tour video up so that I can move on to editing the next two. I don't have a desk right now, which is something that I really want to buy for this apartment. But for now, I am going to use this makeup desk that came with the apartment as my temporary office station. In today's video, I am going to give you guys a tour of my small loft. My food just got delivered. I'm gonna watch a TV show. I've been watching this Korean TV show called Bang Bang Bi Chou Yo Si Ting. All the people on the show are so loud but so funny. <laughs> Hello! So this is the next day. I feel like this video has turned into what I eat in a week because I just ordered food. Because I've been in Guangzhou for the past few months, I was kind of craving this the whole day. It's called Lao Niang Zhou. For those of you who live in Zhejiang, you would know what this is. It's basically a fast food chain here. Their rice is so delicious. And let's talk about what happened today. Like yesterday, I am still trying to figure out this job, but I'm really happy that I was able to learn a lot of abbreviations. All of my colleagues, their conversation just involved so many abbreviations that I've never heard of. So I've been secretly doing research about these things that they're saying. And I was dragged into a meeting this afternoon. Really happy that I'll be able to get my hands on something real. Oh my god. Oh my god. The people in Guangzhou, they don't eat Meikanzai. You can also dip the rice into the sauce. Oh my god. I fell asleep last night without saying anything to the vlog because I was so tired. I actually didn't end up sleeping really well because this room does not feel like home yet. I even woke up midway because I had a nightmare. I ordered so many things today. Hopefully, I will be able to turn it into a home very soon so that I can actually sleep tight at night. about 11 o'clock at night. I still haven't finished unpacking but I did manage to get my two suitcases empty and I put them up on my closet. For the past two weeks, life has been pretty hectic. I went to Changsha on one weekend and right after that weekend, I had this whole week of graduation celebration. I haven't had time to write my diary and I really just want to get them written on paper before I forget about them. So I'm gonna be using the rest of tonight to rewind, write all of the memory from the past two weeks on paper. I just realized I ordered two discs. I just need one. What? What should I do? I really want to get my desk set up because I have a video that I want to upload this weekend and I need a desk to work. It is about 9 o'clock at night. I was able to get my desk set up. Honestly, my room is still in a mess, but I really wanna work on my video because I really want to get it uploaded tonight. I haven't posted in so long, so I really wanted to give you guys something to watch. So yeah, I will just be editing this video. Fingers crossed it will be ready tonight. My video is done. Let's get it out. It is about 11 o'clock at night. I was able to finish editing my video and upload it. Um, I just got my food delivered. You should come with the handsome. You have to kind of wait for the TV to start to eat. 
<laughs> Even more it is the next day. It is about 11 o'clock in the morning. It is Saturday. Finally, I don't have to go into the office. I can dedicate the whole day to organizing my room. I do have a lot of like toiletries that I need to order online. That's what I'll be doing today. I just ordered brunch. I ordered a pasta. I was watching videos on how to make it and I feel like I can make it too. It's not that difficult. So I'll try it in the future. <laughs> okay, so this is the bathroom. This is definitely the place that needs the most care in this whole apartment because it's just so roughly finished. So many things that I need to work on. So I am going to be put up a towel rack right here. I bought a mirror and I also bought a new shower curtain but it hasn't arrived today so I'll be putting up these two first today. This is a shower that I got when I went to Nan Ang because I have this extra gel from the mirror. I'm going to make my own fridge magnet. Ta da! I'll probably write Nan Ang. trash so i need to run downstairs a few times to get rid of them overall i've been able to like get it semi ready for living look at how much food i ordered this was my favorite thing to order when i was in shanghai and i haven't had it for so long fried chicken with coca-cola I got three more packages. First of all, I got a shower curtain because this right now looks shit. So, this next package is an office chair. Video editing is so time consuming. Sometimes I sit by my computer for the entire day and I've always wanted to get a nice office chair but because I was moving very often, I didn't get the chance to invest in a good one. This time, I feel like I'll be able to live in this apartment for a relatively long time. So I decided to get myself an office chair. Very excited about this. I'm currently editing my Changsha vlog and hopefully I can get it out this next weekend. For now, I am super hungry, so let's dig in and eat. <laughs> Today is Monday, it is about 9 o'clock. I just got home. I think today is the busiest day that I had coming back to the Shanghai office. I do have an update on the room, but I need to eat first because I'm tired and I'm hungry and I'm dying for food. I got McDonald's on my way home. I just feel like I'm, I might faint on my way home. Put food in my system. As you can probably tell, this kitchen is so dark. I could imagine it will be really difficult to cook. So I got a light. Today is Tuesday. 
Tuesday, I just got home. Today was a relatively good day because I was able to get the task that was given to me done. I was also able to like have lunch with new people from the office. So I'm pretty happy about today. And in terms of my room, my last piece of furniture just got delivered, which is a shoe shelf. Yeah, let's do this. This looks <laughs> so freaking complicated. So it's 11 o'clock. Setting up the shoe shelf took me so much longer than I expected. I have basically put up all the necessary furniture. Everything from now on is going to be decorative. It's always so fun for me to be able to move into a new place. I'm gonna show you what I've done so far. So I put up a shoe shelf like you saw earlier. This bathroom is where I feel like I've done the most work. I've put up a different shower curtain, put up a mirror on the wall, and then also a towel rack so this place is a lot nicer than when I first visited and then over here I've put up desk and chair and as for this bedroom over here actually when I first came this closet was actually facing a different direction which blocks this see-through door the first thing that I did after even before signing the lease, I asked the housekeeper to help me move the closet to a different direction so it opens up the space. I have done so much for the past few days with this room and I still have a few more ideas but for now, I'm really happy about this room and I'm really excited for the life that I'm going to have in this small apartment. With that, I guess that's it for this moving vlog. Comment down below the house emoji so that I know who stayed until the end. With that, that's it for today's vlog and I'll see you in my next one. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Circle. I recently started a new job at Kraft Heinz, which is a Fortune 500 company. Today, I'm going to show you my first ever work vlog. And today is actually the second last day of our month long training from the International Zone. It is going to be pretty hectic because we have a presentation tomorrow. I need to wrap up a lot of the training sessions. On days like these, I absolutely need caffeine to function, which is why I've been using Nescafe, the black rose. There's no sugar, there's no fats, and there's so many different creative ways for you to make it. You can make it cold, you can make it hot, and I'll show you how I have been making it. So you take one of this instant coffee, put it in, two spoons of sugar, a little bit of water, and then you take a mixer, mix it. Mmm, it smells nice. Now, since I don't have two cups, so I'll just pour it out. Next up, we use milk. Ooh, oh my god, wow. This color. Okay, let's try it. Mmm, mmm. Mmm. So, it is time to leave, and I'll see you in my office. Mmm. I'm ask you about we're currently working in this meeting room and here's the view but it's so foggy today i brought my own lunch <laughs> Okay. 
哦、oh, ，对，拆国家就是报一个国家，然后拆它的首都是什么？台湾报省会，最简单，浙江，呃，杭州，什么黑龙江，是省吧？哈哈哈哈学习的宝宝们。We just finished our Excel workshop. It is raining outside like really heavily. Everyone is working. Working, working, working. Wait, wait, wait. But since like Elena is confused about like what we're doing, we can use two different colors. On German, France, and UK, these are markets we already exist. And for the all the other, we can use gray and use like a green arrow on those that we think we can conquer. They have afternoon snack on the front desk. I'm currently on a call. Turned off my camera to eat this. Okay, so I'm still in the office. It's close to seven o'clock. Like I said, these two days are going to be hectic because we are presenting tomorrow. We haven't had our presentation ready. We're still working on finance numbers and structuring the PowerPoint. Hello. So I just got to the office. I actually went to bed at two thirty in the morning because. Like I said, we have a presentation. We have to finish the PowerPoint, so I stayed up pretty late. So I definitely need some caffeine to get myself energized. And I saw this tip online on how to make your very own coconut latte. So that's what I'm gonna try making. <laughs> well, I worked there for 25 years. Wow. Have you seen your name in uh, Brazilian Portuguese? Uh, Frederico. <gasps> wow. <laughs> that sounds so good. Okay, so that session was with the Asia office leader team. It's really nice because we're just new trainees. Some of us are fresh out of college, but they gave us the opportunity and the channel to talk with the leadership team here in Kafines. It makes you feel like you're valued, you're being seen. If you ever have the opportunity to become a trainee, definitely take that chance because you're also gonna get the similar experience of being seen and being valued, even if you don't have that many experiences. You are believed for your potential. That was a really good session. Now we're gonna have our local like a reflection session with just the trainees. We're gonna share how we feel about each other and how we feel about this program. So yeah, looking forward to that. We are to describe ourselves with an animal. This is what I did. But Emily right next to me said this is a wombat. <laughs> It is not a one bag. Sir Kao, this one, I think, is that you have a very pure, very pure side. I think this is a very good one. I hope you can always have this kind of connection with you. I'm very impressed with your Turkish language and speaking ability. It's really good. And regardless of whether it's Chinese or English, I think you can use the most appropriate words and phrases to express what you want to say. This is what I really like about the program. I'm very impressed with your Turkish language and speaking ability. <laughs> My encouragement is just take advantage at the lower possible. Guys, I am super excited. Okay, good morning. With a good faith today, we will present you what we think that we should launch 
good side in French, we have been told that the best way to start presentation is with the final recommendation in order to set the stage. Okay. I just have one recommendation. When you said our recommendation, you said we have been told the best way to start a presentation. I think that sounds a little bit not professional because you know you shouldn't be told to do something. This is how we think it is. So we are going to start our presentation by giving you our recommendation or something like that. Yeah. Promo promo It means how much your promo price can be low. Today is September 30th, so tomorrow is a holiday. The office is empty right now, like nobody's here. We had fun, we look relaxed and happy with, with the job we have done, we answered properly to all the questions, we got the chance to show the appendix, so... Yes, yes. Let's also take a selfie, like a screenshot of all of us. Okay, smile, three, two, one. Okay, so we're going to do so we just finished our presentation. I think it went really well. I'm so proud of us. Because <laughs> tomorrow is holiday, so there's literally no one here. <laughs> We're the last ones. Completely empty. Sorry, help Okay, announcement. Yeah, I'm filming this. Oh, yeah. Brazil. So it is about 8 o'clock, we're the last people in the office and we're gonna go grab dinner. I believe we're having Thai food. Yay! Friday! Not, not technically Friday. Not Friday, but holiday! <laughs> Hello, so it is past 10, so I just got home. I didn't feel myself eating Thai because I feel like today is a work vlog, so let's keep it that way. It has been quite eventful for the past two days. We have officially finished the training session for our program. Now we're going to be assigned to different departments to work on real life business projects, which I am really excited about. I just feel so lucky to be able to meet all these amazing people in this program it is so easy to get along well with these people to talk to them to work with them it's sad to leave them because we've been spending a lot of time together in the training room but I'm also very excited like I said to be able to work on real business projects after the holiday and definitely leave a comment if you made this far so that I know that people are actually watching this so yeah that is it for today's video and I'll see you next time Welcome back to my channel 又是一年开学季我希望大家在过去的这个暑假里面都是轻松愉快潇洒摆烂的因为我觉得该玩的时候就应该尽情的玩但是只要一开学那我们就可以收收心努力学习啦今天我就想和大家来安利一个有那么一点挑战但是含金量超级高的英语考试 Verbal, Quantitative 以及Analytical Writing 三个部分分别是英语数学以及写作加一的数学部分的难度系数相当于国内高一理科数学中国考生在这一部分的平均分可以超过全球百分之八十一的考生也就是说中国的考生更容易在加一上面斩获高分成为我们去申请海外研究生
、保研、夏令营、申请奖学金等等。像我这样的文科出身，有了加一的分数，就意味着我可以跨专业申请包括商科在内的绝大部分研究生项目。像我就是从翻译专业跨专业申请到了 International Business 国际商务的研究生项目。其实我觉得备考是当你学习英语感觉到迷茫的时候最有效的一个途径。备考加一的过程呢，你起码可以累积到一万左右的词汇量，而且因为这个考试本身是面向英语国家的学生的，所以它考题的设置是非常符合英文本身的思维逻辑的。在你备考的过程当中呢，也会慢慢的去理解、摸透英文句型本身存在的思维逻辑。我的建议是一般来说 ，G I E 的考试最好是预留半年的时间去备考，因为你准备的时间越长，那么你高分的几率也会越高。所以如果你有任何的留学计划，一定要提前准备 G I E。G I E 的考试成绩可以保留五年，这样子后期你就有更多的时间去安心准备自己的申请，或者是增加自己的实习经历。海外研究生申请其实有非常非常多的不确定性因素 ，G I E 考试的分数其实是我们最可控的因素之一，它是全球唯一的研究生学院和商学院都会认可的入学考试。只要你努力，就一定会得到回报。当然了，我觉得不管你最后的成绩如何，在整个备考过程当中能够积累到的英语知识也是无价的。最近 G I E 也开通了线上考试，七天二十四小时，只要你想考，在家里拿着身份证就能考，而且线上和线下考试的成绩的认可度是一致的。也就是说，从学校的角度来看，它是看不出来你是在线上考的还是在线下考的。以上就是今天的分享啦，我希望通过这个视频也可以督促大家赶快恢复学习的状态。如果你要考 G I E， 我希望你可以拿到一个好成绩。So that's it for today's video, and I'll see you in my next one. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to introduce you guys to a super effective way of learning English. Whether you are a student or an office worker or a mom with kids, use this method on a weekly basis to improve not only your reading skills but also your listening and speaking as well. Let's get started. 第一步，寻找到合适的英文材料。我在这边推荐大家去使用 TED 的演讲。除了学习英语之外呢，我们还可以获取到一些比较有意思的观点。选择十五分钟以下就足够了。官网会为大家提供